From the Federal Reserve in Boston, this is Meet the Mayors with your host, Nicole Fischera. Our issues this Friday are building the cities of the future. An exclusive interview with Mayor Joseph Curtatoni, now serving his sixth term as Somerville Mayor. Mayor Alex Morse, the youngest mayor ever to be sworn in to the city of Holyoke. Mayor Seti Warren, mayor of Newton since 2009. And Mayor Joe Petty, now serving his second term as mayor of Worcester. Welcome everyone, welcome to Meet the Mayors. And uh, I'm up here with a formidable group of municipal leaders in excellent looking suits. I was really intimidated <laughs> by the outfit choice this morning because I knew that this is what I would be up against and they, you didn't fail to deliver on that, so thank you. Um, so we've got a, a wide ranging conversation here today, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things have come up already this morning. Um, Maybe we could just go down the line here and quickly each mayor talk about how are you defining innovation for your city? What are some key things that you really think are at the top of your goals for, for reshaping innovation in your city? Well, good morning. Uh, I think that's a question we ask ourselves all the time and haven't asked ourselves how well, it really can, comes down to how, you, how do you enable collaborative creativity? How do you set an environment where you know you can draw a dense concentration of funky, weird, abnormal, creative, uh, knowledgeable people in a community to create that bump factor to produce innovation. And that's really behind some of our story. Um, we, and we've taken that approach since we stopped hunting elements out of the established sectors and said, how can we organically grow that economy in the future? You know, how can we be the burgeoning startup community to grow a local sustainable economy? And I think it's about establishing or enabling collaborative creativity. I love that. Think abnormally yes. was one of my notes I had for Somerville. And uh, as a Somerville resident, I was proud of that note. I really was. Um, and I think there's, a, there's another aspect of this of sort of measuring things that we might not normally measure in terms of it, like this happiness survey, right? I think it's a great example of that. Right. I mean, uh, why do we measure happiness? Um, why do we want to me measure social progress? It's, it's understanding what is the environment that is drawing, that is actually part of the greatest demographic shift in this nation's history. Since mid-century, where you have, uh, you have millennials, baby boomers, or the hipsters or abnormals like you that are coming to Somerville, why do you want to be part of the region? Well, they want to be connected by good transit and bikeable, walkable communities. They want to be part of this certain lifestyle and culture. Um, so those are the type of things we're thinking about. Uh, as we think about how do we grow community, how do we grow economy. And I think for region or the sector and others to, to grow those clusters and for the region to be successful, I think that's the mindset we need to have. That's great. Let, let's go over to Holyoke here. And, and I appreciate you coming all the way over here from Holyoke today. Um, a really interesting approach you've taken in Holyoke. I um, want to talk maybe about Spark, about the Holyoke Innovation District. What's the most important thing for innovation in Holyoke right oh, now? Of course. And thank you so much for uh, the invitation to be here this afternoon. Um, in Holyoke, we made a conscious decision to focus on art, innovation, and technology as the main sectors of our economic growth and workforce development in the, in the city of Holyoke. And it was alluded to earlier, the, the arrival of the Mass Green High Performance Computing Center uh, with the five major universities partnering with Cisco and EMC right in downtown Holyoke. Uh, that was the impetus for the creation of the Holyoke Innovation District, which has allowed us to convene uh, local, regional, and statewide uh, players to meet on a monthly basis as to how we would uh, turn that investment into spin-off development uh, in the city. And it's been a, a great success uh, for us to convene that group on a, on a regular basis. And when Governor Patrick was here to, to cut that ribbon in November of 2012, he said, we've helped you build this, and now the city really needs to decide what we want to do with it. And we've taken that responsibility really seriously. So the Innovation District has led to spin-off development in that general area. We've been able to convene a number of great partners and our, our, our main concept is really how we democratize innovation. And we have this beautiful facility in downtown in a community that is 50% uh, Latino, mostly of Puerto Rican descent, predominantly low income in the innovation district. And so how do we open up the doors of that computing center to everyday folks in our community? And that was what led us to apply uh, to the Working Cities Challenge with the Boston Fed. Uh, and we, won, uh, we were one of three communities that won uh, that challenge. And we, we launched a program called Spark, uh, stimulating potential accessing resources uh, and knowledge with that main uh, ambition to, to democratize, democratize innovation. And so we've now been, been able to launch, we've recently hired an executive director to, to lead that initiative to make sure that 
everyone in Holyoke has an opportunity to start their business, become an entrepreneur, not with the concept that we need to import people from out of the city, but the homegrown talent we have in our community is really gonna lead to sustainable uh, success. Uh, and last but not least, we focused on uh, the creative economy. And just a few years ago, we became the first city in the Commonwealth to have a full-time municipally funded creative economy industries coordinator. Not so much about painting or taking pictures, but how we connect the creative economy to manufacturers, uh, how we create maker spaces and make it easier for people to access those resources that the, that the city government has. So jumping over to Newton, uh, I, I think I really want to look here at regional collaboration. I, Newton has taken such a leadership position with the N Squared Corridor. Actually, the difficulty, the challenge of sort of looking outside of your city and making that first phone call to say, how are we really going to work together? Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, it is an honor to be here with three national leaders, uh, and they are truly national leaders, uh, mayors who are thinking ahead. Um, what Newton has done in relation to the N Squared Corridor uh, is adopted a framework. I think we have to think big and not play small ball mm -hmm. in, as far as setting an environment for innovation and offering opportunity. Mayor Morse touched on this framework that we've developed in Newton. We've done some work with the Brookings Institution and combined some work from Bruce Katz, who promotes the innovation economy, as well as Isabel Saho, who, who promotes uh, opportunity for people to move into the middle class. And we put those together to form a long-term framework to grow the economy, not just today, but in the next 30 years. So one of the things that we've done that we're really excited about in relation to the Square Quarter uh, is that we have an innovation lab in our high school. It's mm -hmm. a general high school mm -hmm. where we've partnered with, with the private sector to give our kids an opportunity to understand what this innovation economy is, the startup economy is. We partner with, uh, with companies like Legal Seafood and PTC uh, so that so our students can be exposed to that, particularly those in the achievement gap. We've also created a high school internship program for kids that don't normally get exposed to these types of careers in STEM. The Mass, uh, your organization, Mass Technology Leadership Council, produced a report this morning that said you want to create 100,000 jobs by 2020. We have to make sure that the workers we uh, are producing are able to participate in this innovation economy so that there's sustained growth in the region. We have a relationship with the town of Needham, you mentioned, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're gonna continue to build a regional relationship around the innovation economy so we can grow, and there's opportunity for people of all different levels to participate that in the future. It's a great setup, and I think education is something that is definitely a huge focus for everyone in this room and the future of cities and the innovation economy. Um, Worcester has a lot to talk about in terms of, of education. Uh, President Obama came to the, the Worcester Tech um, School because of all the amazing work that you're doing there. And I think this connection that Mayor Warren brought up of how are we getting the private sector and the business community directly engaged with the students. Um, Worcester has a lot to talk about on that front. We've been pretty, uh, we've been planning right. This has always been an innovative city. You know, we're a mill town that was really, was part of America's success. Now becoming a city of innovation, technology. And if you look back at some of the things we've done in the past, whether it be the launch of the rocket with Robert Gard, the Clark University, whether it be development of the birth control pill, whether it be the space suit on the astronauts use, and uh, the uh, red boot Stratus, the guy jumped 24 miles into, from out of space, and it was this space suit that was made by David Clark Company right here in the city of Worcester. But uh, it's very innovative, we're very focused on biotechnology, biomed, we're focused on robotics mm -hmm. and uh, mass digi. And we have a very cooperative region right now with the universities, the colleges, Becker College, WPI, Clark, Holy Cross, Assumption. We're all working together for one, one purpose, to be ready for the next step. And like uh, uh, Seti was saying a little bit earlier, but we, uh, we're very innovative, we've got a lot of things going on. We have Worcester Technical High School, mm -hmm. which, which we're really focused on. We have them shadowing businesses in the city of Worcester. We have like an 80% of the kids from that, that school go to college. And hopefully they'll return and be innovative here in the city of Worcester. But we're working pretty hard. We have innovation with WPI, Becker. Becker College right now, we're working with the Mass Digi, and, uh, which is very successful in WPI also. WPI was the first uh, college to offer robotics as a degree and now they have a graduate program also. Mm. And we're working with WPI, they're developing with UMass Medical Center, <clears throat> a watch that, a, a app, I'm sorry, an app that will, people have trouble with obesity. So they're gonna have to, a, an app on their phone. They can 
track their obesity and make sure that we have a healthy lifestyle. So there's a lot of good things happening in Worcester. Let's stay on schools for a second. Uh, Mark Tony, you had a partnership with Code for America, right, in the Somerville Public Schools? Right, where we have Code Fellows working uh, in the city now. We're trying to develop new platforms and, and leverage technology to understand how can we reconcile and leverage all the data and information and, and how to help educate the whole child. But uh, along this topic, more succinctly, is you know we've, we've done things. We've celebrated uh, technology and code. We, we tried to do the, the small things while participating in the Hour of Code, but we're now focused on the more substantive offerings we have in our schools. How do we align that teaching <clears throat> along with our economic development plans, along with the industries of the future, how do we spark ideas and, and sort of abnormal thinking in our students to participate in that economy of the future, to seek new ideas, enable that collaborative creativity. And that, hopefully, that educational line will align with, we're, we're further aligning that teaching with an experience with companies, um, you know, Greentown Labs, which is the largest uh, green tech startup incubator in the country located in Somerville, with companies like Software, um, SmartBear, which is a software technology company which is just located uh, to Somerville. So we're trying to understand and learn and align our concentrated substantive educational offerings with our long-term economic goals in our schools. So I, I would say we're at the forefront asking ourselves why and how. And, and I hope that conversation for the Commonwealth of region uh, leverages the experience and the innovation that's happening in the school districts in the cities, and not, not only in our towns and cities, but across the Commonwealth, uh, because I think there's a fantastic opportunity to align, you know, the merits of the substantive teachings and the experience of, of our school children to build that next workforce. Can you talk a little bit, and this is sort of to everybody, um, talk about the challenges with that regional alignment. What, what's tough <coughs> about that? What's worth it about it? Well, here's the tough part. There is no regional plan. There is none. Um, and this is important for people in this room because this, this is absurd debate of whether to expand the transportation system. Well, if you want to expand the economy, you expand the system. Um, there is a pushback on building more housing. The re just the greater Boston region, and for you, those of you in Boston, it goes beyond North Station and the gas tanks and the <laughs> Southeast Expressway. The greater Boston region is 101 cities and towns and over 4 million people. It represents 80% of the gross product into the economy. If we want to lose that, don't expand the system. If we want to keep the knowledge workforce and those students we are trying to train today, if we want them to stay in the region, but well, we have to deal with the need of 435,000 units of housing, market, submarket, affordable housing, live workspace. We're not doing that. Uh, and there's no plan right now to leverage what we're trying to do innovatively in our school districts to set the educational agenda with the, for, with the future economic agenda. And I put that out as a call to action because we need to do that if we're going to be competitive in the 21st century global economy. And do I want to say, but I do want to say the only collaboration that's happening is coming from the municipalities themselves, whether it's the Metropolitan Mayor's mm -hmm. Coalition, uh, what Worcester's doing out uh, in, in Central Mass, along with Holyoke, with surrounding cities and towns and region. It's not because anyone has a roadmap for us, but we've done it out of need. Yeah, I, I would agree with, the, with that sentiment. Each, each community really has its competitive advantages, and that's why we focus so much on innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, in Western Mass and Holyoke in particular, it's, it's a little simpler to collaborate among the higher institutions because of the, the magnitude of the city. And so in our innovation district, we have representatives of, of the, the public schools, of Holyoke Community College, UMass Amherst, all coming together to, to leverage that, that investment again. Uh, but I obviously think that you know, instead of seeing ourselves as, as one city, in competition with other cities, we need to see ourselves as one big community with different neighborhoods with different assets. And unfortunately, that's not how we view uh, economic development currently. I know the Economic Development Council of Western Mass has attempted to, uh, to make sure we're working as a team, but uh, in Holyoke, we're fortunate because we've been able to set ourselves apart from other Western Mass communities. So instead of focusing on a, uh, one big investment, be it a, a casino or be it a corporation, we're focusing on economic development from the bottom up. And so Holyoke can now market itself as, OK, you don't want to be in this community with all of that activity happening. Come to Holyoke and be part of the entrepreneurship economy happening in the innovation district. Of course, there are plenty of challenges when you have 351 different cities and towns, all with their own transportation plan, housing plan, and economic development plan. But here's what we've learned in the last two years working with Needham. One of the companies I mentioned that's a sponsor of the Innovation Lab at Newton North is a Needham-based company, PTC. Mm. They're offering internships. They're offering the opportunity for our kids in the Achievement Gap to actually 
uh, get exposed to STEM careers. Uh, we partnered with the town of Needham to get transportation investment mm -hmm. from the state of Massachusetts to upgrade our corridor from Needham in, uh, excuse me, from Newton into Needham, $3.3 million worth of upgrades because we partnered together to improve economic development. There's real opportunity. Uh, we've seen it in Somerville, we've seen it in Holyoke, we've seen it in Worcester. If we do collaborate, I think Joe is exactly right. Chief executives have a unique bully pulpit to bring those uh, factors together, bring those region, regional partners together and set targets and goals and it's happening. So I think that cities have, have an opportunity, particularly mid-sized cities, mm. have an opportunity to scale up projects. One of the projects we're doing now um, is Mass Challenge. Um, we are partnering uh, with Mass Challenge to identify incubator space in our region. What we've seen in Somerville, the success of Greentown Labs, I had a chance to visit uh, with Joe, and um, I've talked to Mayor Morse about what's happening in, in Holyoke and Worcester. This idea that the innovation economy incubators can act has a ripple effect on job creation. It's not, not just the actual incubator itself. Um, as we begin to think about this regionally, you get uh, startup, uh, startups, uh, particularly incubators like Mass Challenge, and we can look at it regionally into Waltham and Watertown and Needham together, create jobs, create partnerships, st strength together. We create tr uh, strength together versus independently, and, and we're seeing evidence of that. It makes sense when you're looking at solving these larger issues. I mean, I think transportation is just on everyone's mind these days. I mean, how many people here like want to <laughs> talk about transportation right now? Right? I mean, it's I can't I can't stop having conversations about it because it's um, it's everything, and and it's and it's it's a way of life. It's sort of the well-being in the morning. How do you feel when you get to your job if you've been like beaten up on the highway the whole way there, or um, uh, kind of crowded on the T? Um, everyone here has a plan for transportation, and and it's I think it's different in every case because the needs of each city are different. Can we talk a little bit about what just what are you thinking just on this one issue? Transportation. Yes. It's been a tough month. Yeah. Right? But uh, <laughs> but there is. Uh, like the mayor of Somerville, my friend was saying, there's life outside of 128 too, like Worcester Mass, and uh, there's a lot of innovation going. But transportation, we have, we have now 20 uh, trains a day going, well, not right this current moment, but we do have 20 trains going back and forth <laughs> to uh, Boston to Worcester. And that was under the Patrick Murray administration, and uh, Governor Baker has been working very cooperatively with us to try to how, how to help Worcester. And transportation is about trains, reverse commute, bringing people into Worcester. That's one of our focus. We haven't, if anybody doesn't know, we have an airport. And, uh, and this, we're, hoping to, we're hoping to grow that even further. JetBlue flies out of there right now. We also have Ratrix, which is a company that does a lot of corporate jet service. They're gonna build new hangars there. We're building a new WRTA, a new bus terminal uh, for, uh, in the city of Worcester, a multi-million dollar project that's going on there right now. But we have over 35,000 students in the city, college students in the city of Worcester right now. I know people understand, some people forget about Worcester, but we offer the same thing that Boston offers for half the price. So <laughs> if- uh, That's the commercial. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but if you're interested in coming out, hey, we have a lot of great things going on in the city. We really do. And we, almost $2 billion of investment going on in the city right now over wow. the last few years since the, and it, just a lot of things happening. We had the cranes up during the recession since 2008. A lot of development going on in downtown Worcester. And what's the difference? Worcester finally got its act together. It, was, it has to be a cooperative effort, working with the state, state partners, sure. and that's what happened. People come into Worcester now, they know we have our act together. We actually have a meeting with all the business community because what was happening before was if, 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 if the mayor, if a company wanted to do a project, they'd go see the governor themselves. And the mayor wouldn't even know that this grant money going over to this person or to What's my right. What's that about? And I was saying, well, we get this project yes. over here. <laughs> but for the first time, we're working with the college and universities, the Chamber of Commerce, which was led by Tim Murray. Karen Polito, who's the current lieutenant governor, is very active in the municipalities right now. And she wants to see uh, all the regions succeed. And she's been the uh, contact for the municipalities over the last, since she's become in office. We just met with her yesterday. And, and they want to do what's right for the city of Worcester, with Jay Ash, head of economic development. And we're willing to work with anybody who wants to come. We're interested in a lot of startups. We offer the support services for the college and universities with Becker and WPI. And we also have uh, you know, a company called Technocopia with people who want, to, who, have, who want to have a startup but don't have the infrastructure in place. They can go use their equipment, use 3D printers. And they also, if you develop a product, running starts the next step up for businesses, 
and they try to work, develop a marketing plan for you if you're a startup investor. And we'll, one of the things we heard, we try to be proactive. Startups were saying, well, geez, this personal property tax, I'm sure we probably all have it. And they said, you're killing us on the personal property tax. It wasn't much money to us. So that's any type of like equipment you might have or furniture. Mm -hmm. And we gave them, we heard their cry. We gave them an exemption. It cost the city much money, but it was very important to them as a startup that they couldn't really afford all these different taxes. And there's not much incentives that um, the government offers for business to attract business versus other states. So it's very competitive uh, to try to bring people into Worcester into your own towns. Yeah, it reminds me of the, the low energy argument for moving to Holyoke. Can you talk a little bit about energy in Holyoke? Yeah, of course, and that's one of our biggest competitive advantages. About 90% of our energy is, comes from non-carbon uh, emissions, and, and, and at some points throughout the year, we're, we're actually are carbon neutral, and we have the ambition to be carbon neutral uh, all, year, all year long uh, in the city of Holyoke. About 85% of our uh, energy is renewable, mostly from hydro uh, sources as well as solar uh, sources, and oftentimes people wonder why the computing center would come to, come to Holyoke. You have Harvard, MIT, uh, Boston University, University of Massachusetts, and Northeastern, locating a data center in Western Mass in downtown Holyoke, and the question immediately is why, why Holyoke? And by coming to Holyoke, they're saving millions of dollars a year annually just on uh, electric costs alone. And so that allows us to tell our story as to other data centers, uh, call centers, uh, that utilize uh, both energy uh, and water in our community. And so that's a, a telling story for us, and that's one of the reasons we've been able to leverage the computing center into other uh, development uh, in the city. Uh, and transportation just around that innovation district when I took office there was no specific plans to have a, a passenger rail stop along the knowledge mm -hmm. corridor in Holyoke it's a north-south uh, rail the Vermonter goes up through there New York City up through Hartford Connecticut uh, Springfield Holyoke uh, Northampton and, and up to Montreal uh, Canada and before he, he left office Governor Patrick uh, joined us on that inaugural ride and obviously that was key to, to Holyoke to connect us to the uh, other regional markets uh, in Western uh, Massachusetts. Obviously, we would love to see uh, East-West Rail uh, at some point, but the big first step of having uh, passenger rail going through Western Mass has been uh, key for us, uh, including our more local plans for transit-oriented development and making sure people uh, in the downtown can get to other areas of the city uh, in, a, in a productive way. And so we've been working hard to make those investments happen, and we're looking forward to completing them. And transportation, you're talking to bridge, right? You're kind of going in the yeah, partnerships yeah, I, direction a little bit, too. Yes, and I, my pitch on, on transportation, in addition to, to making some serious investment in the MBTA and beyond, are regional transit agreements, private-public partnerships, um, and some freedom, really, in working mm. with the state and cities and regions, particularly, not just our own city, um, to create these partnerships. So an example is bridge. Um, startup that is quite successful in moving people, we need to focus also on underserved areas uh, because we know transportation is a barrier uh, to people moving into the middle class and beyond. We know it can actually prohibit people from getting to work, uh, from making sure that their children are picked up from childcare and moved around. So I think we need to uh, be innovative in this space and we need to think regionally and that's the direction we're going in with the town of Needham and also uh, looking at other part partners in the north of, of Newton as well. Keeping an eye on time. I don't know if someone's supposed to be flagging me down at some point. I'm good? Thank you, Sarah. Good well, we have Should we do some questions from the audience? Let's do it. Who we Hi, have over here? Hi, good I morning, can't see uh, you at all. Yep, okay, I'm here. <laughs> uh, Greg Piper with uh, Raytheon Company. Um, so the, the question really has to do with uh, whether or not uh, each of you have established a formal or an informal Information Technology Leadership Council or committee. <clears throat> and, and the question really stems from your comment around there's no regional plan. And so I can't think of a better way than to kind of start to collaborate on something like that than to get at least the IT leaders uh, from, the, uh, from each of the townships, um, you know, perhaps plugged in and talking with them one another. Can you say a little bit about how you how you've established that, and uh, I, I ask this question because I'm actually a member of one uh, for the town of Chelmsford as a citizen, mm -hmm. and so um, yeah. it's intriguing to hear that we're not collaborating as much as probably ought to. Thank you. So, um, and some of them are in the process of doing so. Um, instead of our own local IT like, and technology committee, to one understand how we have better connectivity with our residents and business, but understand in terms of local economy where the opportunities are 
I've met, I've probably met 10 people who told me they just moved to some of a good choice uh, <laughs> and, and, and have companies or are participating in the industry or have some startup. Um, you know, Mayor Warren mentioned Bruce Katz. If you ever read the book Metropolitan Revolution, mm -hmm. and if you haven't, you should, because it talks about the city regions and all the innovation, most prudent practical leadership is coming, will come out of the city regions, because sometimes you get help from the state, and I don't know if you have, uh, from the state levels, and at the federal levels, or national levels of any country, very little goes on if you haven't noticed that. And so we are bound, we are, we are bound to be creative. We, uh, we are backed into a corner, so I think, yeah, there was great opportunity, and I, I don't know if my words I mean to be discouraging about there's no plan. It is, my, my, I do say what I say to, uh, increase the level of constructive disequilibrium in the audience and in the public to force a debate and conversation to get involved. Because quite honestly, I don't hear from your sector. I don't hear from the bio sector or the life science sector participating in the argument when myself and other mayors are battling against the absurd position that we should cut transportation or that there is no plan. When we look for the alleviation of rules or the establishment of guidance to have better regional collab collab uh, collaboration, we need you part of that conversation. But you should know that we're, we're, that conversation is going on. The city of Newton just joined the Metropolitan Mayors Coalition, which will now will be 14 mayors and CEOs around the Boston Metropolitan Core, the, 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 probably the innermost core. Um, but then how can we connect that conversation to what's happening at Worcester and the Pioneer Valley and the Blackstone Valley and around the North, the North Shore and the South Coast and around Massachusetts? The great ideas coming out of there. But we need, to have, we need you to be part of that conversation. Any other thoughts from? I do. Uh, I, I just uh, have recently been talking to uh, Richard Walker mm -hmm. here at the Boston Fed. Um, and one of the things he pointed out, and I, I can't, sir, what's your name from Raytheon? I just want to make sure I'm addressing you. Oh, it's hard for me to see you up there. Uh, my name is I'm Greg Piper, and I work uh, out of the uh, Vorica office for Global Business Services. Great. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure I was addressing your question. Yeah. So one of the things that, that Richard Walker in our conversation talked about, there was a great study done by the Boston Fed over 20 or 30 years, and they measured certain indicators in cities around the country that were like each other, shifting from the industrial-based economy to uh, the economy we have today. The cities that had great indicators in employment, health, uh, as well as education, were cities that actually had collaborative efforts with private sector, nonprofit, and government, mm -hmm. and set long range targets and goals to meet employment and training, education, private sector growth. Uh, we're adopting that, and we're doing it regionally. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. Over that 30 year span that the Boston Fed study showed, was that those, again, those cities that had that collaboration, some were led by, by government. Some were actually led by nonprofits and universities. Um, so we have to, and we have a unique opportunity as mayors and chief executives to use the bully pulpit of our, our office, reach out to those in the private sector, nonprofit sector, uh, and otherwise bring them together, look 30 to 40 years out, not just tomorrow, build that coalition so we can hit those targets. Um, it's research-based, and folks at the Fed actually showed it. So we're doing it. Uh, it's, it works, uh, and, and it should be done, I think, uh, regionally and everywhere. Great. That, that's great. Thank you. That's a yep. great question. We have another one. Do we go to the other side now? So should we do? Yeah. David Wilcox, Reach Scale. So the largest urban labs are not here. The largest urban labs are in Africa and China and India. And a giant majority of the urban innovation funding and experience is going to happen there, not here. And yet, in this state, we have multiple centers of tracking that work, sitting at a dozen different universities, uh, the Babson Social Innovation Lab, the D-Lab at MIT, uh, the Business and Global Context Institute at Tufts. Nobody has figured out how you folks can benefit from that Global Innovation Lab 
and this is a place, this is a state and a city and a set of universities and a set of opportunities that present the opportunity to do that. I'm curious if any of you have thought about it and if you're interested in talking about it. I'd like to get into it. Thank you for that question. I met, actually met with the vice president of Tufts yesterday and brought up the very, yeah, the very, that, that point on, in the context of the conversation of leveraging that academic research and knowledge power. I mean, we sit, just my city, and this is probably, you can say the same thing about these other communities, or we're in the power education triangle of Harvard, Tufts, and MIT. I'm smack then right in the middle of it. And I've been able to leverage a lot of that academic and knowledge talent. You know, on that point, I, I really, I've been pressed in Tufts. You know, how do we participate in that, that very conversation? How does Tufts leverage that environment of people and knowledge and diversity and creativity in some of them? Um, so I guess for us, we're just starting it and we're very interested in pursuing that hard. Likewise, in, the, in, in Holyoke, we, because of the partnership with the Computing Center, the five major research universities, we've been able to leverage those uh, partnerships to benefit uh, the community in, in many ways. And so that's something we're, we're continuing to pursue. Uh, going back to the energy focus for, for a second, one of our ambitions also is to become the, the state's clean energy test bed. Uh, we have, mm -hmm. we've already been, been able to test uh, some things on the canals. Uh, been able to get a, a FERC permit, and so uh, the the impact that has on businesses and entrepreneurs looking to test products, we want to market Holyoke as the place uh, to do that. And we're currently in conversation with UMass to become the lead um, research uh, institution to help us uh, reach that uh, goal. And so we're continuing to, to leverage those partnerships, and we'd always welcome uh, more partnerships and more opportunities uh, for our residents. And just to go, to go back to the importance of the district really has served, and it's not just local folks, as I said before, it's people from all over Massachusetts convening in Holyoke because of the magnitude uh, of this investment. And it's also turned into a business response team in, in many ways. And so if there's a particular business or sector that wants to enter uh, the city of Holyoke, we convene uh, this group that we call the Kitchen Cabinet. And so if it's uh, a shortage of uh, qualified employees for a particular company, how do we work with our uh, community college, uh, our four-year institution, UMass, uh, to perhaps develop a program or ensure that these uh, companies are going to have uh, consistent employees uh, in Western Mass. And so this is why it's been so important, not just to act locally in terms of uh, me and my staff in City Hall, but work as uh, a part of a team in Western Mass. And so because Holyoke is focused on innovation, it's become a, a topic in Western Mass because no other community is focusing solely on innovation as their way to, to, to grow jobs uh, in their community. And folks can learn from Holyoke because the initial assumption would be uh, because of our poverty rate, uh, because of what our community looks like, that Holyoke couldn't be successful in this. And never uh, has there been uh, a sense uh, from folks around the table that we couldn't do it because of those, uh, because of those uh, demographics. And mm -hmm. I think it was because of those demographics that uh, we think we're able to, uh, not think, we know we're able to, to be successful uh, in that magnitude. And we have, we have been fortunate over the last few years to have a, a project manager for the uh, Innovation District. And I just want to acknowledge uh, Katie Stebbins, who's the uh, Innovation District uh, project manager, but has just been uh, hired to be the Assistant Secretary uh, for Innovation and Technology by Secretary Ash, and she's here uh, with us today. And so I want to thank you, Katie, and, and wish you well uh, in your new role. Uh, and I also want to thank Pamela Goldberg from Mass Tech, who's really been supporting uh, the Innovation District, and thank Mass Tech and all they do for uh, the city of Holyoke. Great. Looks like we have another question. Hi, my name is. Uh Excuse me, Alex Kapoor. I'm the CEO of Opportunity Space. Um, we are a small startup that is working with cities and towns across uh, the U.S. to enable them to attract new investment and redevelopment for uh, distressed and undervalued property. Um, so my question is, we, as a startup, uh, to scale and to attract investment in us, we need to be able to prove relationships with cities and towns because you are our prime customer. The timeline between our ability to demonstrate those relationships and our ability to scale and raise money, it, there's a large gap between them. There are some cities in the US that are doing a good job of uh, onboarding us quickly, um, giving us a defined pathway and a quick answer. So Kansas City, Missouri, we got an answer with, from them within a month. And we can turn around and tell that to our investors. What I'd love to know from you all is, do you have plans to implement a way for small companies to work with you to proceed through a pathway, do beta tests, 
uh, and get to market quickly so that we can demonstrate this to our investors and scale more quickly? I think this is a great question. I think the connection between small companies and sort of the big opportunities or policies at, at the municipal scale is one of the key issues. I, I think everybody wants a piece of this one, probably. No, I think in Worcester, anyways, we recognize small business as the key to success, and they provide all the jobs. And we're working hard, like I stated earlier, we have this Economic Development Council that represents most business, the universities in Worcester, and we have pathways to success. We are a startup company. You come into Worcester, we have a group of people you can meet and get your an answer pretty quickly. Uh, and that's the way we're heading, because we can see that that is the future and make sure we have jobs in the city of Worcester. Can I, uh, you're absolutely correct. We have a, and I'm sure all four of us are gonna say the same thing, in, in that we have a process where there's a one-stop shopping. We work directly with the startup. We try to make things as easy as possible. I wanna make a pitch to you. What's your name? Alex. Alex. Yep. We are, I am hosting a national symposium. I'm part of the leadership of the U.S. Conference of Mayors around promoting the innovation economy in cities and regions as well as offering pathways people have access to that on October 7th and 8th in Boston. I'd like you to be a part of that so you can speak to a wider. One of the things that mayors need to understand, that we want to make sure mayors understand is that they actually have the power, if they understand what your needs are, they actually have the power to make things happen if they do it in a timely manner and an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. But a lot of mayors, you know, they, a lot of us, and I've had to learn the same way and the hard way in some ways, um, know that, don't, sometimes understand that time is at, of the essence um, and you have to find ways in using the bully pulpit of your office uh, to make your community as attractive as possible. So this needs to be introduced to, to mayors nationally. I think a lot of mayors want to do the right thing. A lot of cities want to do the right thing, but they don't necessarily know what those what we need to do and what those tools are. So mm -hmm. if I could sign you up for that, that would be terrific. Yes, sir. Talk to you afterwards. <laughs> I, I, no, we, I think we appreciate you asking uh, that question. I think the advantage to, this is all of our opportunity to make our pitch, I guess, um, is uh, <laughs> like back to the com back to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some of them next week. Back to competition. <laughs> See you next week. I can meet with you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, he could do a tour. Yeah, exactly. Alex has got four, so right? popular right now. This yeah. is a loaded I'm, I'm question. I'm named Alex, too, so you should come to Holyoke. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I think the advantage of a city like Holyoke, it's 40,000 people. It's a small enough city where we can, obviously, you can talk directly to, to those folks who, who make decisions decisions and a small enough city too where you can see examples of success uh, in the city and being in Western Mass and in a, in a post-industrial city, obviously the abundance of space and the, and the cheap costs. Um, and no one else can say this up here and I'll just, I'll just say it, but a popular mechanic recently uh, named Holyoke the number six city uh, in the country for uh, startup companies uh, and that was just uh, two months ago. And so obviously we've been leveraging uh, that national attention on the city of Holyoke uh, as to why that is. And so it's been really important for us to frame uh, the story of Holyoke is, you know, the Boston area isn't the only place to for startup companies at Western Mass and Holyoke uh, are really great places. And that's happening all uh, over the country. The price points uh, are lower, costs, is, uh, costs are cheaper, uh, and governments often are more accessible uh, to those folks who need those decisions to be made. I, I just want to add to this. Um, by the way, he is coming to summer. I wasn't kidding. Next week. Um, <laughs> yeah. Much of what we've established in terms of strategy and what my colleagues have is because we want to know why Someone comes up to me and says, yeah, you have great places for startups. Ah, fantastic. Why is they saying that? Why? Why, why is the knowledge economy concentrating in our region? How do we leverage that? How do we establish plans and policies that further bolsters and grows and facilitates that economy? Um, and some of that conversation continues. So I'm just going to add, because I agree and can probably say the same thing with my colleagues, one of the things we saw as a roadblock or a potential hurdle is, you know, say, take Greentown Labs, those tech startup companies were finding ways to test their products. Well, I wanted to use that knowledge in, in to further our sustainability, sustainability goals, to be net zero emissions by 2050. So we put out an RFI request for interest uh, for different products. We basically said, use some of all as your test lab, as your incubator, as your test kitchen. Uh, let us gain knowledge for better policy development or product use, and you have success in data to sell to those investors to take the next step. Along those lines, we're also understanding how to grow that industry. You know, um, you know, how do we connect that thought power from, con from crazy idea conception established of test product to further manufacturing, which we really can't do in some of them. Perhaps the manufacturing 
um, areas further out in Western and Central Mass, maybe in these regions, uh, and also to keep that idea and that industry growing in, in our Commonwealth. So much of what we have comes from being probative and curious to why startups weren't in our city, to why they are now, to how they grow, to how they establish a greater presence. I'm just going to go back, <clears throat> give more a little plug for Worcester, but we do have <laughs> some uh, startup initiatives in Worcester. I don't know if you know Kevin O'Sullivan with MBI out of Worcester. He does a lot of startup work with the uh, biotechnology type companies over in Gateway Park in Worcester. And Craig Blaze with the uh, uh, Mass Deve um, the Development Corporation. Also, now we have a business incubator in the city of Worcester that he's developed where the old telegram because that building was. So we, we recognize this as an important issue and we're investing towards that. So I got a tactical follow-up on that. It, and this is, this is always, it's always about people at the end of the day. So um, like I know Rory Kadires here, the new startup manager for the city of Boston. Um, who, do, who do people talk to? If, if people in this room want to get connected to innovation in your city, who are you going to point them to? They should write it down right now. Go to this website, sign up the list, email this person. Well, in Somerville, you speak to uh, our economic development director, Ed O'Donnell. And he has a whole team of people working, not just in startups, and even really anything that is creative, really, that, that entire industry we're trying to enable and, and collaborate. So Ed O'Donnell, www.somervillema.gov. I'll give you my cell phone on the way out. 617-959-9700. Make sure the other mayor's given to you, or else come to my city first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Meryl, cell At Joe Curtatoni, Twitter handle. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> yes, yeah, same here. Our planning and economic development director, uh, Marcos Madero, uh, very accessible. Uh, I'll also I'll be around, always available. Um, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, Instagram. Uh, there's multiple sources to get in touch with us. And again, being a city our size, we want to be as accessible as possible uh, to folks. But holyoakredevelopment.com. You have a follow-up? Can we, can we get yeah, through the last, absolutely. the people they should talk to? And then I don't know we'll if you, you. you know, Alex Morse is actually really 54 years old. He's <laughs> not, you've been lying about your age. Come forward. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, okay. <laughs> S. Warren, S. Warren at newtonma.gov. That's my email. So for anyone that is interested in working with the city of Newton N squared, S. Warren at newtonma.gov. Please email me directly. My email is on the website. It's funny. It's like Swarin. Like if you get Swarin to office, it's perfect. Swarin at Newton. In Worcester, you can Michael Trainer in the Economic Development Office, or Mayor at worcesterma.gov, or Tim Murray at the Worcester Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and you, we all talk to each other. We all know what's going on. We communicate on a regular basis. So any one of those avenues would be great. Just remember, what's this half the price of these guys here? <laughs> I don't know. Holyoke could probably give you a run for your money on that. Holyoke supporters. <laughs> All right. I think, do we have one more? Sarah, do we have time for one more? Okay. So I'm uh, Mike Kincaid. I'm one of the founders of this council, and I'm older than 54. Um, I'm not really 54. <laughs> <laughs> Nuh-uh. You know, I, I hope you didn't believe that. Really that. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, It'll look it. Yeah. This has been a particularly impressive panel and conversation. Um, so I just have one request other than saying thank you. When you guys fix your cities and get them to exactly where you'd like them to be with the innovation economy here in Massachusetts, would you please head down to Washington and fix that mess? <laughs> Elect, uh, read, read Metropolitan Revolution, and when you have a choice between a local official who's done the local work and some other theorists or CEO, no offense, pick the local official because we get it done. All it's right? the uh -huh. age of the mayor, baby. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it totally is. I can't think of a better place to end than that. Uh, I would like to ask each mayor, do you have one crazy idea you want to get done in 2015? What would that be? We're going to develop the, or the world's first social progress index for cities. I, I think this year we really want to focus on the ambition of creating more maker spaces uh, in the city, number one. Uh, number two uh, priority is getting reelected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good priority. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but my pitch is, is to expand regional partnerships. And one other pitch I want to make. I went on a terrific trade mission with Governor Patrick to Israel, and I see some folks in the audience that went with me. I came back, and, and uh, the town of Needham and Newton uh, did a terrific event with Israeli companies promoting that our region is a great place for them to grow, as well as for uh, those that want to grow 
out of the startup uh, portion and mature that they can move to our region. And I want to make a pitch. Cities can actually uh, really make a case internationally uh, when, when uh, other countries are looking at doing business in the United States. What better uh, marketer uh, than the mayor as well as current businesses to attract them? So I want to make a pitch for, for that growing opportunity. Great. What's to just, again, working with the business community and tracking businesses here. I know I have a crazy idea, but my crazy idea is getting the word out about Worcester. I know if anybody saw Chronicle over the last Friday night, it was a repeat from a few months ago, just saying how gave a great presentation on the city of Worcester. And New York Times a couple months ago wrote an article about Worcester and probably 10 or 15 years pre previously called us a broom closet and uh, to change its whole attitude towards Worcester. And that article was forwarded, one of the most forwarded articles ever in the New York Times throughout the country. We get more ad, more advertisement from that one article, how great Worcester is. And it's a great community. I invite anybody who wants to come out and see Worcester. We have the infrastructure in place. We have great arts and culture in the city of Worcester, one of the best art museums in the country, one of the best theaters in the country that competes with New York City. There's a lot going on in Worcester. I guess my crazy thing, getting the word out about Worcester. So. Well, thank you to everyone. I think this has been a fantastic conversation. You have their email addresses. You have no excuse. Get connected. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.